Tony. This is Svita Pachia. We're building a cruising sailboat. And at the moment, we're working on this, this keel construction that you see behind me. Um, as you may well be aware, there was no video last week because um, I basically did this. For the whole weekend. But things are starting to take shape now. As you can see, you've got the first two of the bronze keel bolts in position and uh, all ground up and shaped, obviously. I've fitted seven in between these sections, cross sections in there that the keel bolts attach to. And I'm attaching them, first of all, with these, these homemade long nuts that I've made. The, the 16 millimeter or 5 8 inch keel bolts um, obviously have a nut on the top where they go through the floors of the boat and that'd be a 5 8 UNC nut. So I just started, decided to stick with that and uh, make these 5 8 UNC long nuts that are welded in the keel that the, the bronze bolts screw into. So that was the first job to cut off some bits of, of steel, shape them, drill a hole up the middle, cut the thread in there and then put this hold up there, put the shoulder on the top end so that they locate in the plates I've got in the keel and these bronze bolts screw into them.
Yeah, hello. I'm draw filing. How are you? <laughs> Look at me again. What are you making? Uh, some steel. Steel for what? Uh, for my bow. For the anchor. Oh, the anchor fittings. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. Looks good. Hazel, hold it up. You've been polishing, haven't you? Yeah. Let's oh, come no. in. Nice. See some finger marks. Ah. Let's come in. Have a look at that. That's a fitting for your bow, huh? Yeah. Well, Looks very nice, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> hey. And as you can probably tell, I've also I've got this bit of plier here that I've cut as a template to to locate the keel bolts. This is marked off of the wooden keel timber, wooden keel timber. It's marked off of the keel timber, <laughs> which in turn is marked off the bottom of the boat. So these holes give me the locations for the keel bolts. Um, yeah, it all comes off. He says, he says. It all comes off. And then we can see down inside and see the, the cross members and the way it's going. Well, my mini lathe has been doing a lot of sterling work this week. Um, you may remember I bought this almost exactly a year ago, actually. And... Uh, one of the things I knew at the time it would be used for was, was in this keel bolt um, manufacturing, keel bolt fabrication process. Um, and indeed it was. So you've seen I used it to make those long nuts, but also the uh, bronze keel bolts themselves. They're, they're, um, the very front one is a, a 13 millimeter bronze rod and the other, all the other ones are 16 millimeter bronze rods. Um, and as you probably know, bronze nuts that are you know, available to buy are all UNC sizes. So um, it involves turning them down a bit. Well, when I measured up those bronze rods, they all were actually a little bit oversized anyhow. So um, the, for example, the 16 millimeter bronze rod, which actually measured, as I say, a bit more than that, uh, had to turn down to 15.88, I think is, is 5 eighths of an inch, uh, to take the 5 eighths UNC thread. Uh, for the for the length of the thread, of course. Uh, she'll be doing the same on the top. Once the rods are in there, I've got the measurements for the length of them. I'll be cutting them to length, taking them out again, turn them down, putting the thread on the top end. Uh, the 13 millimeter, I've put a half inch thread on. So that's what's that, 12.7 millimeters, isn't it? Um, so I've done that and it's been great. Perhaps not the most powerful thing in the world, as you may have noticed from the from the earlier video. It's, it, it's, it's I say, not the most powerful beast, uh, and you have to learn how to work with it, which means really taking fine cuts, using it gently. You've got a, um, a stepless speed adjustment on this potentiometer here, so, um, and I have the feeling you need to get the thing spinning fairly fast just to just for it to cut effectively, but. They do work and, and I'm very, very pleased to have it. And it's done, as I say, a great job this week.
How's that look? Hey.
does look pretty good, doesn't it? And that is it for this week. Um, should be pushing on with this. So there are in total 11 kill bolts, so clearly another nine to get in. Um, but they should go relatively quickly now. I'm in a position to be fitting those. Certainly hope to have those all in position this next week. I've got a bit of grinding still to do on the seams, um, but then we'll be ready to move this box into the other shed. Uh, and then I've got a plan to make a, a sort of combined lead smelting pouring thing. Uh, I should be making that and we'll be seeing about getting some lead on the melt and pouring. That would certainly be interesting. There's a couple of other little things that have been going on round and about this. This very exciting piece of plywood <laughs> is one of them. This is, is part of the uh, water tank breather system that is just about installed now. I'm gonna paint that before I fit it. But that's where the, the actual final vent comes through. It's a mountain for the vent, which has a gauze in it to stop creeper crawlies crawling up into the water tanks. Um, but I'll show you that in due course. And as I said, I didn't get a regular YouTube video out last week, but I did get a video up on, on the Patreon page, which is you know, publicly accessible, open to all. Uh, if you're interested, get over and have a look. You'll see some of the water tank breather installation there. Um, I say, available to all. I say, that's it for now. Thanks for watching all that YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe or some such thing on that. And a massive thank you to our patrons who support these videos, this channel. We'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.